We're going to start with problem number 10. Problem number 9 you can find in your notes. Okay, those are just definitions, or you can Google it if you want to. Problem number 10. Is the following. It says, okay, if cosine of some angle is equal to negative 12 over 13 and the angle that we're looking at, theta, is in quadrant 2, which basically means that theta is between pi over 2 and pi. Okay, we want you to determine the rest of the remaining trig, the five trigonometric, trigonometric functions, excuse me, um, when, when we look at theta or involving theta. So the best thing to do here is draw out what your triangle looks like, get an idea of which which side length we can fill in. So the cosine, remember, is your adjacent over your hypotenuse. So we've got negative 12 over 13. The hypotenuse is always positive. And we're clearly going in the left direction, so our x run length should be negative 12. To find out what the height value is, we would take negative 12, square it, add it to, let's call this guy y, y squared, and that'll be equal to 13 squared. When you solve this, you should get a value here of 5, plus or minus, but this is going to be positive because, again, we're heading upward, and this is in quadrant 2. So it looks like this length right here is going to be a length of 5. Now we can get the rest of the trig functions. So the sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The tangent is equal to the opposites over the adjacent. And then, of course, we can do the cosecant is the flip of the reciprocal of sine. The secant you could have gotten without doing any of this because that's just the flip of cosine reciprocal. And then the cotangent, of course, is the flip of the reciprocal of tangent. And there they all are. Okay, so let's look at a, um, another problem. Let's go to problem number 11. So problem number 11 says to determine all the possible values um, of theta, which is between 0 and 2 pi, given that the sine of the angle is 1 half. So if we draw that picture out, we want a height value, remember sine is height, we want a height value of a half. So there's a triangle out there that has a height value of a half. So this then is theta. There's also another triangle out there that has a height value of one half. And so then this angle right here is theta. The question is what are those two angles? Well, these, by the way, are the only two angles between 0 and 2 pi. Because once we get past 2 pi, we can get back to this angle again, because there's an infinite amount of angles that have a sine value of 1 half. However, there's only two between 0 and 2 pi. So this angle over here, if you look at your unit circle, is pi over 6. And this angle over here is 5 pi over 6. Okay, problem number 12. Problem number 12 says that you have a, you got a building that is 500 feet tall. Excuse me. An individual stands from the base of the building at 500 feet. So let's draw our building out here. Okay, so there it is. Here's the ground. So we've got some person standing over here and their distance to the building is 500 feet. They measure an angle of elevation 
to the top of the building. So angle elevation comes from the ground up. So that angle they measured at 20 degrees. The question is, what's the height of the building? Well, what we're missing is the height. Let's call it y. What we have is the length running over, which is x. So if you think about this, oops, really what we've drawn here is we've got this, I'll do it in a different color here, we've got this triangle here in purple right here. And on this triangle, we don't know the side. The building we're hoping is vertical. Okay, so it makes a 90 degree angle with the ground. It's perpendicular to the ground. If it's not, it's leaning a little bit. Uh, but let's assume that it's vertical. I think that's a pretty good assumption here. This length down here is 500. Okay, and this is 20 degrees. So that's what our picture is drawn. So what we, we don't know the opposite, we have the adjacent side. So we're going to use tangent because tangent involves both opposites and adjacent. Remember, we have this. So the only one that involves opposite and adjacent is tangent. So the tangent of 20 degrees should be equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Solving for y gives 500 times the tangent of 20 degrees is equal to y. So we'll grab our calculator, make sure that we're over here in degrees, which we are, and we'll take 500 times the tangent. Whoops, eh, we don't want that. So we'll do the tangent of 20. So there's the tangent of 20. We're going to multiply that by 500. And we're going to get 182, roughly. Okay, and so that's how we do that. For problem number 13, Our angle <clears throat> is in quadrant 2 because it's between pi over 2 and pi. So our angle here is going to be over in this quadrant. Our sine value is 3 over 5. So let's draw our triangle out. And so its height value, so sine is opposite of our hypotenuse, so it's 3 over 5. Solving would give us a length of 4 down here, but it has to be negative because we're in quadrant 2. So that means the sine of theta, now it asks for tangent and cosine, so remember the sine of theta is 3 fifths. The tangent of that angle should be equal to the opposite over the adjacent, so negative 3 fourths, and the cosine of the angle should be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, just like that. Okay, let's take a look at problem number 14. So let's draw out the picture of this. We have some observation deck on a lighthouse that's 300 feet above the surface of some lake. So we'll, let's draw our, our building, some observation deck up here, and that goes out over the water. And there's a, some lifeguard on duty, and it spots a boat out on the lake sailing directly toward the lighthouse. Okay, so we know that this length up here, this length is 300 feet. I'm going to make a line that is parallel to my water. Now the first observation it comes out and it has an angle depression, meaning from the horizontal down. 
of 26 degrees. So the first the first observation oops, spots the bolt out here. So let's draw our bolt. There it is. And we know that that, that angle is 26 degrees. This is a right angle over here, by the way. Then the boat sails for a little bit. It's coming towards us. And the new angle, okay, coming down all the way from here to here, is going to be 32 degrees. So our boat has now traveled. And there it is. So we went this way. The question is, how far has it traveled? The question that I want to answer is, how far is that distance? So if I know the two distances from the base, I can subtract them. So the first distance, this length right here, is given by the following. If this little angle up here is 26 degrees, then that means that this angle down here is also 26 degrees. Because these two lines are parallel and they're cut by this, this what we call a transversal. So the tangent of this, the tangent of 26 degrees should be equal to the opposites, which is 300 over the adjacent side, which is the actual length there. Um, so this, this whole length that I don't know, let's call it x. So x is equal to 300 divided by the tangent of 26 degrees. So we'll take 300 and we'll divide that by the tangent of 26 degrees, and we're going to get 615 feet, roughly. Okay, now the next measurement comes in, and that's this blue measurement right here. And to calculate that length, we again note that this angle down here is also 32 degrees. So the tangent of 32 has to be equal to 300 over a different value. I'm going to call it um, A. Okay, it doesn't matter what you call it. So, so A is the length down here at the base. So A is equal to 300 divided by the tangent of 32. So we'll go ahead and get that. And so that's 480. Now notice that had I gotten a number that was more than 615, that wouldn't make any sense. Because how could the boat be getting closer but still be further away? Okay, so my, my numbers seem to make sense. Now, the distance between those two numbers is what we're, what we're asked is going to be the 615 minus the 480. So about 135 feet. The boat has traveled between here and here. Okay, for number 15. I'll do 15 and then we'll stop there. We'll go um, for this video. So, for problem number 15, we need to evaluate the cosecant of 5 pi over 4 and the secant of pi over 3. So let's rewrite these so that we know them. Cosecant is the opposite of sine, or the reciprocal of sine. So this is 1 over the sine of 5 pi over 4. And the sine value at 5 pi over 4 is negative square root of 2 over 2. So that's 1 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2, which is 1 times 2 
divided by the square root of 2. Negative. So this is negative 2 over the square root of 2. Rationalizing the denominator gives us negative 2 times the square root of 2 over square root of 2 times the square root of 2. So this is negative 2 square root of 2 over 2, which is just negative square root of 2. So that's your solution there. For B, so this is A. For B, we do the same thing. The secant is equal to 1 over the cosine of pi over 3. And we know that the cosine value of pi over 3 is a half. So this is 1 over a half. And 1 divided by a half is the same thing as 1 times 2 over 1, which is just 2.